Welcome to Backroom Talk. We're talking about skills today. So in that phase, someone is just developing um, the rec- requisite capabilities to be able to perform that skill. This gets a little nuanced in terms of uh, how much volume does someone need to do for a human. It's just enough. If you're a CCB coach, you know what that looks like, right? That's motor control, that's strength endurance, that's max contractions, and then now you're putting that in other settings. To listen to more Backroom Talk, be sure to subscribe. Learn to design personalized programs with the OPEX system of coaching by heading to opexfit.com. Welcome to another episode of Backroom Talk. I'm Georgia here with Carl and uh, we're talking about skills today. We are. Skill we are talking, stuff. Talking about skills, developing skills. Yes. Skills and fitness. Skills and fitness. And this is coming off the back of We've done a lot of skill talk at OPEX over the last month. So we released a free guide, Functional Fitness Gymnastic Skill Progression. If you haven't downloaded that one, we'll drop a link for you to be able to grab it. We did a webinar also on skill development. We really focused on where coaches go wrong in developing skills in this one and obviously provided some solutions because we're not just going to focus on the bad. We're going to give some of the good as well. And uh, that went out Last week, uh, so we hosted that live, there is a recording available. So once you get done listening to this podcast, if you want to go a little deeper into skill development, progression and expression and like see some pretty visuals because you guys are just listening to this, you can also watch that webinar recording. It's available for free inside of Learn RX. So uh, no need to have a premium subscription, though, if you don't have one. You should get one because there's some really awesome content inside of there but we will uh, have this one unlocked for you to be able to view so we'll drop a link you can go check it out in learn rx go check out some other stuff that's available in learn rx as well and improve your skills as a fitness coach yeah mazar has a couple well one yep. class in there right now right and some more on, on the way yeah. so those are specific to gymnastic skill progression uh he looks at the mobility and strength and technical requirements someone needs for the first class was the butterfly pull up. So I'll use that as an example. He breaks down how to assess that. He looks at like the actual progression and what does it mean to take someone in the gym? What movements are you going to do to develop that skill initially? And then in program design, how are we going to accumulate the volume to get someone to the level they need to be able to express that in a competitive setting if a competitive setting is what they are pursuing so uh yeah that's a really great little class there um with some cool video of uh some gymnastics movements so go check it out cool let's uh let's get to it so we're talking skill development progression and expression today not just progression not just development all of these things have to uh have to go in tandem together but do you want to spend a couple minutes first carl on the where it goes wrong just broadly um yeah i think uh this it's a challenge for us because in the webinar right like we we're able to actually show like the graph and what we mean by development progression and expression um if you haven't checked that out definitely go and check it out but if it's not up in front of you right now we'll try to do a as good as of, of a job as we can to explain this through audio but essentially just think of like a a power time curve or just like a linear curve or how a bell curve would look um, on a graph Um, so you have your x and y axes and um, you just have like this line going up right like the first chunk is skill development so in that phase someone is just developing um, the requisite capabilities to be able to perform that skill. So they're just gaining a skill. And then in the next chunk, that that line continues to go up. Um, we call that skill progression. So they have the, sk- the skill, and now they're progressing and getting better at the skill, whatever that means for them. And then there's another line, and then there's expression. So that curve, or that line keeps going up. And this is where someone's um, expressing this skill, uh, and their goal is to try to get to their highest potential their personal potential in that specific skill Um, so like georgia mentioned not everyone's going to um, go to the progression and not everyone most people are not going to go to the expression so the expression side of this thing is is more meant for a competitive environment and a very very low percentage of people 
need to touch that because a very, very low percentage of people are actually competing in fitness. So, um, yeah, the development and the progression is kind of where most people, most coaches are going to spend most of their time with their clients, uh, depending on who you're working with. Um, but yeah, overarching, I think, uh, the biggest piece that we hit on in the webinar where a lot of coaches go wrong is just not understanding where their client sits inside of that, uh, inside of that model. Yeah, we'll break down the nuance of what is happening inside of the development progression and expression model. So you guys really understand that. Uh, But one really important note to make there is that there's almost two paths that one can follow. And there's the human path, i.e. our gen pop regular person who just wants to play and experience fitness and is enjoying skill development for the learning of it. And then there is the athlete path. So this is the person that is, like you said, Carl, really chasing expression, chasing their potential, and is going to progress all the way up that uh, linear curve. So we have to make sure we know who the person is in front of us and which path that they want to follow. And I think a big kind of takeaway or eye-opening moment for me looking at that graph as we drew it out, Carl, is that so many coaches just pick the athlete model because it's there and it's capable Uh, and you know it's there people are capable of doing it without actually asking is this what my client wants Mm -hmm. like is it is it worthy for them to go down this path and chase this skill to this high level for some people if they want to win a medal stand on a podium for sure for most people probably not yeah and i mean another big thing i think is uh what the hell is a skill um I would look at everything that you do in fitness as a skill that needs to be developed and progressed. Um, not all of them need to be expressed, of course, but um, an air squat is a skill, uh, just like a backwards roll to support is a skill, right? I wanted to use two examples that were like polar opposites in most people's minds, but they're both skills. Um, and I think if we looked at every pattern, every exercise as an independent skill and uh, taking our clients through this progression, I think it'd be really beneficial in terms of uh, a coach aligning their thoughts and what they're doing with the client right now, what that client is capable of through an assessment and what that path looks like in, you know, three, five, 10 years, whatever that looks like for the client. Yeah. Gosh, especially with like cyclical stuff, right? Like running, rowing, biking, a lot of it is very non-complex. So it's really easy to be like, yeah, anyone can do it. Go for a run, lace up your sneakers and get out there. But running is technical and there is work that has to be done in the development phase and in the progression phase uh, if someone wants to eventually express running or if they just want to run full stop we have to make sure that we're honoring that Uh, but I think most people again look at easier lower barrier movements and just think you know this person that just showed up can do it I'm going to throw them right at it and they end up in the you know somewhere down the progression line without ever actually having done the work on the front end yeah you know it's funny um this, this kind of opened my eyes to it. It happens quite often, but uh, last night specifically, because we had this conversation yesterday, and uh, last night I had three kids in my garage, and we were, uh, we, were, we were training in the garage, and these kids range from 10 to 14 years old. And that fact could have never been more the truth, right? Because we, we were doing, gosh, we did like... Uh, we did some uh, like bounding stuff uh, as our like A series, and then we did uh, we did some bounding stuff with like some counterbalance squatting as our A series, and then we did some uh, low uh, low box squats um, A or B one, and then B two we did um, oh, what did we do for B two? We did uh, we did dumbbell bench press, and then for B three uh, we did single leg easy bar curls. Um, and these are kids, right? Um, and then we did some, uh, some breathing stuff or some pacing stuff, um, uh, to finish it off, but we're going through this and it makes you realize, and this happens all the time, right? Cause I, I work with, uh, you know, a number of kids, uh, quite frank, frequently a couple times a week, but it's like, yeah, every one of those things was absolutely a skill. Uh, so you can't take it for granted. You can't just be like, okay, yeah, we're going to do these low box squats, get after it, right? It's like, and they've done this probably 30, 40 times, right? This exercise, but every single time it's like the skill isn't 
like we're still developing that skill of doing a low box squat. So the uh, the specif the specificity as they get ready to do it and as they do it and the reminding and all that, it's like there, there, there. So you can't take that for granted, right? And then we go and we do like some uh, bike ergering, uh, some running and, and rowing. And the rowing <laughs> was something as well where it's like, okay, this is, this is it, right? Um, and then one, we had to like take off the rower because it's like, yeah, they don't really have that skill quite yet. Uh, so we just need to row independently. But it's funny because we had that conversation yesterday. And then when working with like kids or novices, it's just so apparent. It's like, don't push them don't push them forward when they're not ready to be pushed forward. Um, and that's just like something that I, cause I haven't worked with like a bunch of novices in so long. So working with kids again, it's like working with it. I mean, it is right. It's working with novices that don't understand how to really move their bodies quite yet. Um, so it's interesting looking at this like model and like relating that to, uh, young kids or novices. Definitely. And it can be so easy to be impatient and be like, it's good enough. It's yeah. fine, mm -hmm. but you might be hitting that like instant gratification of, I just want them to move right now, mm -hmm. but are you actually setting them up for long-term success? No. And it's a fine line of like not overcomplicating movement either, right? Because if you, if you are like super stringent and you're like, uh, I don't want to be that person that's like, you know, good enough isn't good enough type thing versus, uh, you know, every time they do something, I have to stop them and correct it and there's like uh, frustrations that happens on the uh, on the on the client side, so it's like always finding that balance, right? And a lot of time, it's like uh, it's 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 in like the, the thing that you design for them to do. And I know we say that in a bunch of different ways, but if you are finding yourself constantly having to refine and stop and do this and do that, you might just be giving them the wrong thing. So you need to like take that back and like really think about what you're giving them for exercise without just like hastily changing it on the spot every single training session. Um, so maybe that's where some coaches go wrong in skill development as well, just giving them the wrong things to do at the wrong times. Absolutely. Do you think that there's anything to like knowing where your client wants to take the skill as well as to how stringent you are and how much you, you know, get into the details and the nitty gritty mm -hmm. like does someone want to do 30 unbroken ring muscle ups or do they just want to be able to like i don't know play with a skill in in the gym and yeah. call it a day and, and then move on from it like does that affect your thinking when you're getting in there and you're deciding how hands-on and how much you need to cue and how much you need to perfect uh no not really because i think uh in the development stage because no matter what your ultimate goal is the thing needs to be developed, right? So in that development stage, um, I think it's, uh, and from a realistic standpoint, I think that we should always be looking for, uh, I don't want to use the word perfection because that's not where I'm trying to go with it, but um, good, right? Yeah. Like good for that person based on their range of motion and uh, you know their anthropometrics or whatever the case may be. I think that we're always looking for that, uh, no matter what their goal is, if it's to play or to do 30 unbroken or uh, 30 for time, whatever the heck that is. Um, I think independently in that skill development, it needs to be really, really good, uh, whether they want to move on or not. Yeah. I mean, I just like, I think about uh, someone doing a clean and the attention that a coach might give someone who's like expressed the desire to be a weightlifter and then someone who's just like, doing cleans mm -hmm. as part of their fitness right and uh, I think it's tempting uh, for to let it slide for people who are just doing it as part of their fitness when the coach knows that they're never going to be stepping on a competition floor yeah. that's not an excuse <laughs> can't have, can't have your cake and eat it too right no. I mean yeah if you're gonna do it do it I don't care what the reason for you doing it you know what I mean if you're gonna do it do it if if you think it's too much effort too much time then simply don't do it because yeah. it's not important, right? It's like walking in a fucking class and seeing a bunch of people doing cleans. It's like, why are all these people doing cleans? 50% of them can't even do the movement. So just don't do the movement, right? For sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think we're agreeing on that. Yeah, I, no, yeah, de definitely yeah, I, I so. Definitely so. I just think, uh, like you said, in that situation, if you're programming cleans for someone and they're not like willing to slow down and like take the time to develop the skill properly and you're running into frustration there, 
there's something misaligned with the fact that you're giving them cleans. Like yeah. they're not doing them because they want to refine the skill. If you're butting heads with a client over taking load off, slowing down, taking time to progress the skill, then they don't actually care about progressing the skill. Yeah. They're not worried about getting better because if they truly were worried about getting better at the clean, they'd put the time and the work in on the front end to be able to eventually express that thing. They're probably wanting to get stronger and maybe be able to pick more weight up off, off the ground or they think that it's going to improve their body composition in some way. Mm -hmm. Learning the skill of the clean isn't going to give that person that though. Yeah. So let's reassess what we're doing in program design if you're running into that. Yeah, the clean is such a great example. Uh, let's, let's keep the clean in mind as we have this conversation because I think we can plug this in in different places and a lot of people listening can... Uh, can relate because I don't think everyone can relate to like a, um, a muscle up for right? sure because not a lot of people have like truly tried to express a muscle up but I think a lot of people have tried to express a power clean or a clean yeah so I think that's a really good one yeah we'll come back to it all right let's uh spend a little bit of time going into the nuance of this graph that we talked about so yes. our development progression expression graph can we, can we um is there a way to like link off to this graph i can i should be well if i link to the webinar people will be people able to go to the, the webinar yeah, and see yeah, it yeah, there definitely. so that's what i'll do okay awesome uh do you want to dig into development yeah let's let's start there so physical attributes that someone needs to be able to perform the skill is what's happening in development so if someone wants to do a clean they mm -hmm. have to have the base level of strength that someone needs to perform a clean. So yep. are they able to squat and deadlift X amount of weight uh, to earn the right to express that dynamic movement? Yeah. So we're looking at that. We're looking at do they understand how to actually perform that pattern? Mm -hmm. So do they understand the mechanics of the clean? Uh, we're making sure that they have the mobility to get into a good front rack position mm -hmm. and that they can catch a bar in a squat comfortably. That timing and speed is there. Any other pieces that you'd say would go in the development stage? Yeah, I think, um, and this is just, I mean, I wouldn't call it spitballing. It's something that I've thought about a lot in the past, but um, kind of spitballing on some things that uh, would fall inside of skill development for the clean, even before you get to the clean, right? It's like, does the person, can the person back squat at least their body weight? Uh, can the person bound onto a 18 inch box? Um, and show awesome control can the person bound off of a an 18 inch box and show great control and landing uh, does the person have the ability to extend their hips does the person have the ability to do uh, an upright row with 50 percent of their body weight right like just little things that we can really start to think about because when we put all those things together we're essentially looking at a human doing a clean right um you know I'm sure you've seen this before, but take someone that is brand, brand, brand new to fitness and you're like, okay, PVC pipe in hand, let's start practicing the clean. And if you take that PVC pipe away and you ask them to just like jump in the air and land, uh, they can't even do it. So maybe you should just teach that person to jump in the air and land before you put a PVC pipe in their, in their hand and you talk about like, uh, chest up and you know extend the hips and triple extension and the uh, you know uh, first and second and third pull and the catch it's like can the person jump and land right just little things that we need to really think about so there's a there's a million things that would go inside of that um, you know 500,000 before you touch a barbell for the clean and 500,000 after right uh, because just because someone has the ability to do all those things now they have to actually learn the movement itself and that's where the pvc pipe comes into play right so there's before the pvc pipe then there's the pvc pipe, and i'm just saying pvc pipe like not everyone needs to use pvc pipe but i think you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. there's before there's the pvc pipe it's graduating from a pvc pipe to a barbell and then it's adding load to the barbell and being able to do a loaded clean cleanly yes <laughs> right um that would be in skill development right so it's like do they have control? Do they have the balance? Do they have the strength? Do they have the 
um, the coordination, there's a lot of things that fall into it, but those things would go inside of the skill development phase. Absolutely. And you have to know, uh, as a coach, number one, like what are the parts that someone needs to have accumulated and have done successfully to be able to do the skill itself. And then you have to decide like, what is the, uh, what is the passing grade for the skill? What do I need them to be able to do to say, check mark skill accomplished and that's sometimes like a little bit gray right uh there's nothing to say that someone has to hold a freestanding handstand hold for 90 seconds to say they're great at freestanding handstand holds could it be 75 could it be two minutes could it be 30 seconds i don't know but you as a coach have to come up with what you determine to be success in achieving that skill and you have to be prepared to stick to that and let someone live in that development stage until they've achieved what you decide success is going to be for them. Yeah, definitely. So development. We've developed our skill. We can perform it well. Should we go into progression next? Or yeah. do you want to talk about some of the things that go wrong in development before we move on? Um, maybe let's save the wrongs. Let's, let's have people yeah. go back to the webinar. Sounds good. And uh, really dig into you know, where, where we think people go wrong in some solutions. Love uh, it. Yes, I'd love to offer solutions to those things, but this would probably be a, a three, three hour, hour conversation. <laughs> I love how we both said three hours. Yeah, that just, was crazy. We're just uh, in sync today. <laughs> um, so yeah, go back to the webinar, uh, take a look at that or listen to that. And uh, we laid out, um, you know, where we think a lot of people go wrong and offer up some solutions to that. Definitely. Okay, so let's go into progression. So... We've got the skill down pat. Now we're going to begin to progress it. And there's a series of steps that someone can walk through in this phase that will depend a little bit on intention. So is this person an athlete? That is, and when I say athlete, someone who is trying to perform these skills in a functional fitness slash mixed modal setting, or is this person a human who's uh, just trying to develop the skill for the sake of developing the skill and the fun that comes along with that? Walk us through the steps, Carl. Yeah, definitely. So as we go from development to progression, um, so let's just, uh, let's say where we're at in the clean. Uh, we did the 500,000 steps before uh, before we put a barbell in our hand and then we did the 500,000 steps. And obviously it's not 500,000, you get what I'm saying. Uh, after we got the barbell in our hand and this person is able to do a, a loaded clean, who cares what the weight is, right? They're able to do it beautifully. Um, they're not strong by any means. Uh, they, they can't really recover from it because uh, they haven't done a bunch of volume. Uh, they can just do it. So now we're going to progress that skill. Um, so we start with increasing volume. Uh, so we just need to do a lot of reps of it. Um, this, gets a little, this gets a little nuanced in terms of uh, how much volume does someone need to do um, for a human. It's just enough right? Just do enough where you're like, yeah, they, they're, they're good. They, they can recover from it. Um, and obviously there's a lot of differences between a clean versus a, a handstand push up versus a muscle up versus, uh, are they able to run for 20 minutes nonstop? Like there's a bunch of, you, you guys can see depending on what the skill is, uh, you know, this progression will be very, very relative to that. So first we get our volume up. Once we get our volume up, uh, we do that with breathing. Um, so just some cyclical modality. Um, after we do that, uh, we do it with a complementary uh, movement pattern. So that would just be, you know, if, if we're cleaning, um, maybe nah, clean isn't an awesome example. It's for this. a weird one. When do you yeah. superset a clean? But it's okay. It's okay. We, uh -huh. we got this. Okay. So let's say someone wants to, because the goal, remember, so as we're going through this progression, remember, as we go further and further to the right, someone can stop right? Someone can stop. So at the very end of this, uh, we have people doing this in a mixed, uh, a mixed modal aerobic environment just for exposure. They're like playing, yeah. right? They're playing with mixed work. So, uh, I'd want to do it with a complementary movement. If the goal was to get to where I'm doing like cleans and assault biking and, and running and push ups, Right. Yep. Um, so bear with us on this one. Uh, so we're doing it uh, under a little bit of fatigue, um, uh, we're just breathing, not, not like metabolic fatigue. We're just like doing easy work. Uh, let's say like, uh, you know, I'll just use the EMOM, 10 minute EMOM, you know, 30 seconds on the assault bike at a low aerobic pace. And then the other minute, uh, alternating minutes, we're doing, uh, two cleans. Um, 
now we're to complementary. So maybe now we're still doing that EMOM, but instead of it being a cyclical modality, now we're doing push-ups, right? So we're doing two cleans. Um, and then alternating minute, we're doing 15 push-ups. Push-ups is what I was thinking uh, for the clean as well. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. Cool. Same page today. Yeah, there mm -hmm. we go. Uh, or a dip. A yeah. dip's another good one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll stick with push-up. Uh, so that'd be the complementary uh, movement. And then now, uh, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, the goal for the the goal for the human in this progression is to just be able to play with it in a mixed environment. Um, so if that is the goal for the human, now they're playing with it in a mixed environment. So maybe we're doing a, you know, 30 minute, against a 30 minute clock, we're doing uh, five cleans, we're doing, uh, you know, 15 calories on the assault bike, we're doing a 200 meter run, and we're bringing over that push ups, we're doing 15 push ups, and we're just doing that against a 30 minute clock. If we're designing this for an athlete, uh, they're not going here, right? Because their goal isn't to just play with it. Their goal is to express it, right? So that athlete, their next step would actually bring them into the skill expression. We won't hit that now, but the athlete isn't doing mixed modal play or mixed aerobic play because that's not the outcome that they're looking to get. Definitely. The nice thing about skill progression for the human is that as their coach, unless they're going off and doing cleans on their own, as their coach, you get to decide what the challenge is going to be. You get to set what that mixed modal play is going to look like. So uh, you don't run into what you run into with an athlete where you have to shore them up against any possible challenge that could be thrown at them that incorporates that skill. For our human, we set the boundaries. We decide that it's gonna be appropriate for them, for them to do a power clean with a push up and an assault bike. And we don't have them do a power clean with a, you know, kipping chest to bar pull up and a row because we know that they're just not going to be prepared for that. And the amount of work that it's going to take to make sure they're prepared for that amount of volume, that amount of grip work, they're just, it's not going to, you know, spit their goals on. It's going to take away from that enjoyment of that skill process. Yeah, so definitely. let me go back. I think it'd be, cause I actually want to connect, uh, some like sample design yeah. to each one of these things. I kind of did it with the um, cyclical and mm -hmm. the complementary, but uh, so going back to development, they're just able to do it. Then we get to skill progression. So in that first, that first piece, so this is loaded, right? So we talked about volume. So that would be volume and intensity. Yeah. So uh, let's say that, cause we have to start attack attaching this to like what phase of training your clients in, right? So an example of uh, higher volume, clean work, uh, would probably fall in an accumulation phase for um, a human, right? So that could be something like, you know, it's your A, it's your A, right? In your in their training program, and they're doing, um, you know, one dot one dot one dot one dot one times five sets, resting ten seconds between each single. Well, they're doing sets of five, but each single and they're dropping and those are really high quality and they're doing that for five sets and they're doing that for a number of weeks right and they're just maybe they're increasing intensity a little bit throughout there uh but the goal is like hey we're progressing this in volume i want you to do more cleans at whatever that intensity is and then we get that uh that person into like some kind of intensification phase and then we're going heavier on the clean so instead of 1.1.1.1.1 it's 1.1.1 right they're doing threes now um and intensity is increasing um so that's like the volume and intensity then they get to the cyclical we already laid that out with the imam um, we laid the complementary out with the imam with the push up, and now in that mixed aerobic piece, we kind of laid that out as well. But like that 30 minute clock, and we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing that. Um, but you kind of hit on it where it's like, uh, we can just kind of play. We're not like, uh, we're not so stringent on, we need to get really, really good at this while doing other things and uh, improving our quote unquote performance. So when you're designing a training program for this person, and they're like being introduced to that uh, mixed aerobic environment or play for them, you have to think about every time you sit down and you design their training program, like what's the goal, what's the progression? And we said it a number of times, but it is just exposure. You're just doing it with some exposure and you're just kind of playing, right? Um, and when you're playing, you really have to put yourself in the, in the shoes of that client and think about how they're gonna feel as they go through that. 
And what I would say is you need to like if uh, if if capability is out of five, you need to just program at a two mm -hmm. if the goal is to play. So it should just be like flow smooth. Right. Uh, maybe a three. So there's a little bit of challenge so they can get into some flow, um, you know. So just think about what that what that three out of five is for that client and just stay there. Never go to a four. Definitely never go to a five in terms of how um, how difficult it is uh, inside of that. And that's truly just like playing with the skill in that mixed environment with the only goal being exposure. And what else are you putting in there, right? Like we're just kind of like hastily throwing in the push-up, but the push-up had to go through skill development as well. The push-up had to go through skill progression as well, right? So it's really easy just to say exercises and throw them in there, but you really need to just think about it for a second and assess have they gone through that skill progression or are they even capable of going through a progression or ex or um, or uh, expression f with each of those exercises that you want to hastily just throw in there? For sure. And then let's take uh, the clean is a great example for this. There's a lot of different ways that we can perform a clean, right? Especially if we're talking about in the mixed setting. Are we going for some kind of touch and go situation? Are we doing singles with an element of control there that has to factor in to how you're programming that skill as well mm -hmm. and they have to have done the work in the earlier stages of progression if you decide that you want them to go and do touch and go power cleans uh, in their workout nope we said cleans we didn't say power cleans. we, we didn't touch and go cleans <laughs> sorry i just like I, I just i don't know it's something about that the clean it's like well, we won't get into that Power clean and clean to me are two totally different exercises. They're definitely different yeah, exercises. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're they on the same are. Page. I completely agree. <laughs> but like, let's say, let's say you haven't, you want them to do touch and go cleans in their workout, mm. or you just write five cleans in their mixed modal aerobic piece. Yeah. But they've been doing a bunch of singles in their skill progression phase. What do you think is going to happen when you're now asking them to cycle that barbell and they've had no exposure to doing that? Yeah. So we have to think about those nuances. Have we asked them to do that in that skill progression phase? No. Then make sure when you write that program, it's 1.1.1 mm -hmm. in, uh, in the mixed piece as well. Yeah. Or just like in your language uh, and how you, and you have to teach your clients this, but um, like it's little things, right? Like, uh, you know, so the first thing that comes to mind is like whenever I've written MU, that means a ring muscle up. I don't put an R in front of it, right? Like, but the people that I've worked with, they, they've known that, right? If I put a lowercase B and then a capital MU, then they know it's a bar muscle up um, for like cleans in a, in a mix setting. Um, I would recommend just getting specific. And I think that's what you're saying, but um, if you want them touch and go, touch and go cleans is actually its own skill. Like it's, it's, it's a different exercise than five cleans. So I would, I would, you'd have to get really clear with your clients on this, but you could just go five cleans and your clients should know that those are not touch and go because touch and go are its own exercise entirely because they really are a touch and go clean is much different than a clean, uh, intention and you know stability and endurance it's just in grip right it's a it's a much different exercise absolutely and if you've been putting in the like the let's call it months or potentially years of development that it takes to get someone to the point where they can perform an advanced skill like a clean in a mixed setting chances are you've had conversation with your clients on what you're working towards. Mm -hmm. Like we should never be as coaches just in our mind, ha ha ha, we're sitting here developing this skill for our client, but they have no idea what's at the end. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be some conversation on what the outcome is. So when you sit down for a monthly consultation and you talk about how training's going and how cleans are feeling, as they're getting through that progression stage and towards the point where we can move on from pairing a, you know, complementary exercise to actually doing it in an aerobic setting, we're having conversations on what that aerobic setting is going to feel and look like mm -hmm. so that they're prepared for that. So, yeah. yeah, you've done the work as their coach on the front end to prepare them. Definitely. So that is a uh, skill progression for our human. Should we talk about the athlete a little more now? Yeah. So now we're going into expression. So. Mm -hmm. Humans are not allowed here. We're, we're like, <laughs> we're basically saying athletes aren't humans. I think that's okay. Um, yeah. So now we're going to in, going into expression. So we uh, start here with uh, non complementary So um, you know we're doing this person's doing the same EMOM that the human did, 
or that they did when they were in the progression phase of, uh, you know, a 10 minute EMOM minute one, they're hitting, uh, two cleans, but now minute two, we're thinking about things that, uh, challenge the same muscle groups or patterns that they're utilizing in the clean. So this could be, uh, cleans and muscle ups, right? This could be cleans and any variation of a squat. This can be, um, this can be cleans and, God, there's a million things, cleans and anything that's hanging, right, to challenge grip and uh, and, and your pullers. Um, there's a lot of things that can go into here, but uh, the goal here is to choose an exercise that makes the clean harder when they get back to it. So uh, that would be a non complementary phase. Then we go into mix aerobic, uh, and this the goal here is expression. So... This is very similar to what we laid out for the human and exposure in terms of how it could look, but the intentions are completely different. So you mentioned it. The intentions here are to get really fucking good at the clean uh, while breathing heavy and doing other things. So we're progressing from non-complementary. So now we might be putting complementary and non-complementary patterns inside of this mixed setting where in exposure, we weren't doing that. Like we're not doing... Uh, cleans and muscle ups for the the client that just wants to play with the clean because it just challenges the movement a bit too much. Uh, we might be doing cleans and muscle ups uh, for the athlete. So same idea, but the goal is to get as, as good as possible. And then we get into non-sustainable pieces and anaerobic work. Uh, so this is like the, the really shitty stuff uh, where people are uh, doing some cleans. Maybe they're doing some muscle ups again, and then they're finishing off with uh, you know, a 400 meter sprint as hard as they can, or they're finishing off with, uh, 35 seconds on the assault bike is not as hard as they can, but very, very hard. Um, and then they rest a really long amount of time and then they recover. And then they do that again for a number of sets. Um, so we have sustainability in the mixed aerobic piece, uh, that's expression. And then we have repeatability and the anaerobic. So it's not sustainable per se, like they can't extend it out to the right, uh, but they can rest and repeat it. One thing we didn't discuss uh, is the principle of functional volume, mm -hmm. uh, which applies very much so to the athlete. For the human, functional volume, you get to determine what functional volume is. You decide what you want them to be able to do. So with functional volume, we're thinking about how many repetitions does this person actually need to be performing of this exercise when they go and do their competitive event or go and do their workout, whatever it might be. So for the human, it's like, okay, we're, we want them to be able to do 30 cleans really well, or we want them to be able to do 15 cleans really well, or 50. Like we get to decide because there's no uh, outside force that's setting uh, competitive standards. For our athlete, they have to be prepared for the standards of competition and mm -hmm. what might be thrown at them in a competitive event. And you as a coach can do some work to look back at the playing field and the events from years past to determine what you think that functional volume is going to be. James certainly lays out functional volume for the skills of mixed modal inside of mixed modal, uh, which is a course we have available inside of LearnRx. Uh, so that one is, uh, is available there too. We can link that one if you want to check it out. But uh, yeah, you have to have that in mind. So as you're walking through those steps of progression into expression for your athlete, it's not just a matter of doing, you know, 30 toes to bar because that's what you decided was going to be fun to program for the day. It's doing 100 toes to bar because that's what they might face when they step in a competition and ensuring each step of the way they're able to do those 100 toes to bar, recover and do them again. Yeah. I think, um, well, because obviously the, the big player in uh, competitive functional fitness is CrossFit. Um, so their competitions have determined uh, functional volume for their sport, of course. Um, I was just thinking while you said that, I wonder how their functional volume is going to change now that they fired Dave Castro. I wonder if their functional volume is going to go up or down. Definitely. I mean, you, you do see real trends. Like there was definitely like... Uh, precedent for what to expect each year based on what had come in the past so it will be interesting to see if uh that is continued or if uh we see something completely different yeah um, I, I guess i'm not that interested honestly but um <laughs> it's interesting to see how that's going to move up or down Definitely. i don't really care but uh, i know there's a bunch of people that do 
Definitely. So that is uh, skill development. Yeah, it's skill development. We really talked about the clean a lot. Sorry about that. But you could plug anything in that and you can kind of do that thought experiment of like, what would it look like developing a skill in the squat pattern, right? Um, if you're a CCB coach, you know what that looks like, right? That's motor control. That's strength endurance. That's max contractions. And then now you're putting that in other settings that aren't resistance only. Um, cause we, it's funny cause when we were talking about this yesterday, I was like, okay, we need this big, we need this big graph or this big, uh, canvas. And we have like all of our progressions inside of it. So, cause we have like more overarching progressions and then you would like do like the little magnifying click on like the one thing and it brings up another big progression because the one that we're working through right now, this would just be a part of a larger uh, progression, right? Like for the, like for our uh, contraction mm -hmm. progression, for instance, right? Like we didn't talk about motor control, strength, endurance, max contraction, uh, because the intentions, like we're, we're thinking about intentions and using it in other settings. Um, but that, that'd be interesting to build that. Oh my gosh. That's like a dream thinking about that right now. I love, um, something I love about like principles and frameworks as they apply to fitness is the way you start to see the crossover, even with like resistance and then energy systems training. Mm -hmm. uh, you start to see where those frameworks begin to merge as we start to think about like taking patterns into a pacing environment. I think that would be so fun to put together. Uh, that means we're going to do it. <laughs> I, think we, I think we have to. Yeah. We'll have like a big uh, OPEX interactive wall and you can like press on it and like zoom yeah. in on. And then there's the four C's framework and then yeah. there's the three P's and skill progression. And Is this everything. available in the metaverse? Uh, it might be. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I think it has to be. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Maybe we, uh, maybe we go into the metaverse. We build a, we build a meta opex hq and sorry i'm getting into like real estate because there's i've read some nonsense uh, well it's not nonsense about it's real reality. estate online yeah mm -hmm. like metaverse real estate mm -hmm. um yeah we're gonna build this uh you know what we're gonna do we're gonna make it free though yeah we're gonna build this opex hq and uh open for all free for ccp coaches and learn rx <laughs> subscribers <laughs> You got to subscribe to Learn RX if you want to come, okay, guys? And right. you better be using Coach RX too. I just got overruled. So sorry. Sorry for you uh, non subscribers, you yeah. non OPEX people. Yeah. Come join us. We, we Doors are open. Yeah. Doors are open. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the price to admission is fairly low for Learn RX. So uh, if you're not already in there, there's some really good content at a very affordable price. So go check it out. Yeah, it's funny. I, I asked you guys, we were on a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was like, what were we doing? We we're talking about something with Learner X and I just asked, I'm like, would you guys, would you guys pay? Would you guys subscribe to Learner X? Cause I think that's like a question we always have to ask ourselves, Definitely. right? Because I asked myself that before that call and my answer was like, it was a, an honest. Yeah. If it was no, I would have told you guys. Um, but it was an honest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, th I thought the same with like coach RX and like everything that we build. And, uh, yeah, it was just like, if we don't think it's extremely beneficial and that value exchange isn't there for us, um, we'd either make that value exchange there by lowering the price. Uh, or if, you know, we didn't think that we should charge people for it at all, uh, we'd probably nix it or make it free. Um, so I don't know why I said that, but it, it made me think about it when you said, uh, the price is low. I think it's, we always have to think about what is that value exchange? Am I getting, Am I getting more than what I'm paying for yeah. out of that thing? Because we, we think about that every time we make a purchase, right? Um, when we go to the grocery store and we're like, you know, we see, um, we see this uh, uh, organic meat versus this like uh, farm meat, right? And like commercially farm meat. And we're like, what's the value exchange? Do I want to pay 35% more for that organic meat uh, because it tastes better? because it's better for my health, because I just want to say I eat organic. Like, you know what I mean? So we, we like have this conversation in our heads and we're like, yeah, that's worth it for me to pay 35% more because of X, Y, and Z. So in our heads, we're like, yeah, that value exchange is there. Or when we sign up for any kind of subscription, right? Uh, Netflix, I think everyone might have Netflix or uh, a very large percentage of people have Netflix. Um, they make you think about that value exchange quite often because they're just uh, pumping their prices. 
every year now. Which yeah, I got the notification like three days ago. Yeah, they should. I mean, I I uh, I think they should do that. But um, it makes you think about it every time. It's like, ooh, is it really worth eighteen dollars? I remember when it was nine. You know what I mean? And we have that conversation with ourselves. And uh, some people are like, fuck no, it's not. Because I have this other one. I have this other one. I have this other one. Um, so I don't know why I went on that rant. But I think about that a lot. No, actually. I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good thing to consider. And continued education is something that most coaches say they value a lot. Uh, I Those two words are like pretty like hot buzzwords in the in the world of fitness coaches we want to say and show that we're continuously learning and upgrading our skills and our knowledge because that's so directly tied to the service that we provide Mm -hmm. it's not to say you'd have to like be learning something every single day to be a great coach but you do have to be committed to this like pursuit of mastery and excellence and constantly upgrading and knowing more if you want to grow in your career and the intentions of learn rx are to make that really accessible because Mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel this way, but continued education sometimes felt like a little bit of a drag in that you had to like go out and seek like a weekend event or like a seminar or yeah. something. Or you had to make like a very deliberate like attempt that was outside of your daily routine to go and learn. It was never like really nicely tied into just what you do on a daily or a weekly basis. And the intention of Learn RX is to make it something that coaches can put on their calendar for 30 minutes on a Thursday in between clients and be able to sit down and watch a class and come away with a totally new way of thinking about one element of fitness. It's designed for them to be able to, you know, digest in a very sustainable, uh, to use an OPEX term kind of way. And again, just to wrap that into what you do on a daily or weekly basis. So you don't have to think about the continued education process. It just becomes something you do. So not to give you like a long sales pitch or anything, obviously I'm like pretty passionate about uh, what we're doing and the content we're putting out, but we'd we'd love to have you in that platform. Uh, So please go check it out. Even if it is just to watch that free webinar or take a couple of the free classes we have available. Uh, We really truly believe there's a lot of value inside of there for fitness coaches and would love to have you a part of it. And I do think coaches should learn every day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's not, I don't think they need to learn specifically through like this platform we're calling LearnRx Mm -hmm. or um, fitness specific learning. But I think, uh, gosh, coaches and just people should be learning every day. Um, I think most people do. And I think a lot of it's unintentional, right? A lot of people listening, listen to podcasts. A lot of people listen to audio books. A lot of people read real books. A lot of, you know what I mean? Like that have nothing to do with what they do on a daily basis or what they do to feed their families. Uh, but those people are still learning, right? Through Absolutely. conversations, through consultation. Like there's, there's just so many, uh, opportunities, but, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of freedom in uh, in feeling like you can continually move forward, uh, in your fitness coaching education. Um, without a massive financial or time burden. I think that's uh, that's very, very beneficial. And obviously, that's why we did it. But um, yeah, LearnRx is very good. I would say so. I would say so. Well, uh, just make sure, guys, as you are learning, as you are listening to this podcast, as you're doing a client consultation or you're doing your train se- training session, take a couple minutes and just reflect on what you learned from that process. Because I think that's where we cut ourselves short, Carl, is we don't have the opportunity to reflect on what did I learn in this process. And that's like just a 30 second or a two minute question to ask yourself after each of those opportunities. But uh, it's in that moment that you get to learn and consolidate and grow from it. Yeah. Another podcast. But um, yeah, that's that's also something I've been thinking about a lot. I feel like I've said that like five times on this podcast with you, Georgia. You have but, a lot of thoughts. Um, yeah. Like... Uh, digesting what you're consuming and i've been like thinking about what's the best way to digest uh what we consume and um what i'm what i'm like playing around with and i think i I don't know i'm sure a lot of people think about this but to actually do it i don't think a lot of people are doing it uh but to disconnect from everything and just like be with yourself right like disconnect from everything and be with yourself and i used to think that was like not productive uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm messing around with that a lot more now, um, where, you know, we've, we've said it before in, in other ways and, uh, we had different intentions behind it, like the, the term unplugged, but actually unplugging and just like 
being with yourself and uh, not having your phone on you and not having to have uh, earbuds and listening to an audible or because I used to be that person that was like, if I'm not doing something, I'm wasting time and I'm not growing. And then I came to realize all that growth happens in recovery, just like exercise, right? Mm -hmm. Growth happens in recovery. Uh, We need to recover from learning. How do we recover from learning? We disconnect from everything and we just think, right? That's like, uh, that's how the, the brain muscle grows. It's like telling a bodybuilder to do a bunch of volume, but never sleep. Uh, when we think about our brains, I think, uh, we need to think about it that way as well. Consume, 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 and then recover from that, from that, uh, consumption. Um, that's something that I'm, I'm thinking about a lot right now. I like want to spend a whole other hour talking about this cause I'm like so into this topic as well, but, uh, like deliberate consumption as well. And not mm-hmm. just like not accepting everything that people send to you or that you see, uh, or that like appears in your feed and actually being like, I'm actually not going to look at that. I don't want to, I don't want to learn that right now. I Mm -hmm. don't want to engage or consume that. I think most people see something and feel like they have to acknowledge. They have to let's Uh stop. Let's make this our next one. No, (laughs) cause this is a good, it's a good conversation. Um, cause I think there's a lot of good stuff that can come from this conversation from a, from a coach's standpoint and like, uh, I'm going to leave it there because I'm I'm continuing this conversation and I just asked you to stop. Uh, <laughs> let's let's hold. Well, more to come on this. Well, guys, we look forward to uh, the next episode with you. We clearly just want to keep chatting, uh, <laughs> so we'll please just hang out with us. Yeah, we'll we'll save it next time. We look forward to hanging out with you on Friday afternoon when we uh, record the next one. As we said, make sure you go and check that LearnRx uh, webinar recording out for more context on the skill uh, development expression development progression and expression framework uh so there'll be a link for that to check out and uh while you're there click around see what we have available in LearnRx, and if you like what you see subscribe thanks guys thanks guys